Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Veteran Hardware, a combat veteran that likes talking about computer hardware. Thanks for stopping by today. So if you're like me, when you heard that the new RTX GPUs from Nvidia were gonna be announced, you started to salivate a little bit. I don't know, I think that the GPU is the sexiest part of a PC build. However, the lackluster or lack thereof of high-end GPUs in the market, mostly due to scalpers and crypto miners, it has been making it very difficult for gamers and overclockers alike to upgrade. Also, with a certain human malware raging hell on earth, things aren't looking so good. So here's the better stock in 2021. Amazingly enough, Zotac has managed to send me over their RTX 3090 Trinity to take a look at. Thanks a lot, Zotac. My last GPU from Zotac was a GTX 1070 Ti Amp Extreme. I love that GPU. It came with a rather large triple fan with big ass heat pipes and massive fins on that cooler. It even came with some GPU sag, which I didn't mind since most of its life sat on a horizontal test bench anyway. But I upgraded as most of you have already done as well, looking for more performance. Namely, I was intrigued by the ray tracing and DLSS technologies that Nvidia introduced at the time. Now I realize that ray tracing and DLSS isn't the end all or the reason why some people upgrade. Hell, some just likes having the latest and greatest like me. So what do I say about an RTX 3090 other than it's out of stock? Availability aside, the RTX 3090 is the top skew for Nvidia's RTX 3000 series lineup, taking in the coveted Titan Throne. That said, the RTX 3090 has 10,496 CUDA cores, which is impressive in its own right since the GPU that it replaces, the RTX Titan, which is based on Turing architecture, had less than half of what the RTX 3090 has with its Ampere architecture. Running the same amount of memory, the massive amount of 24 gigabytes worth, GDDR6X is used instead of GDDR6 memory running at 19.5 gigabits per second, which also yields faster performance. Also, since it has Ampere architecture, third gen tensor cores and second gen ray tracing cores are on the improvement spec sheet as well. Now, Zotac's RTX 3090 Trinity is what is called a reference design, not to be confused with Nvidia's FE or Founders Edition models. So why do I mention this? Well, since it's based on the reference design, this model won't have a beefed up power delivery like other board partners might do with their models. So what does this mean for overclocking and performance? Well, it's gonna be quite power limited since the power limit on this board design is locked in at 103%, i.e. 350 watts. Unlike say EVJ's FDW3 Ultra, which through a recent BIOS update allows for up to 500 watts, translating to a staggering 142% power limit. So what can I say about Zotac's RTX 3090 Trinity is that it's a pretty color neutral graphics card. Gray accents on the top of the triple fan shroud, black with a bit of RGB in the top and backplate. Uh, the shroud is made out of metal and plastic, which seems quite sturdy. Remember my comment about GPU seg that I had with my GTX 1070 Ti Amp Extreme? Well, Zotac has implemented a rather beefy mid plate that helps in aid in its rigidity and seg. Slotted for a two slot design, but in all actuality is more like a three slot when you factor in the extra girth of the cooler design. Five heat pipes run through the entire link to a GPU plate which has shared cooling for the surrounding GDDR6X memory chips. Flipping the RTX 3090 Trinity over, you see three fans measuring in at 90 millimeters each. Having two eight pin PCIe cable plugs means Again, it will be quite power limited. In my testing, the RTX 3090 Trinity uses around 7% at idle of the 350 watts, which translates to around 24 and a half watts. Temps at idle also hovered around 50 C, mainly because the fans don't spin up until there actually is a load. Loaded up, the RTX 3090 Trinity hits around 73 C while hitting its max power limit. Not bad. Performance wise, the RTX 3090 Trinity is just like any other RTX 3090 at stock clocks. So does it handle Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K with all the bells and whistles? Well, yeah, it can. But Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that really puts the hurt on any system, let alone GPU. Still, the RTX 3090 Trinity managed to maintain around a 1800 MHz core clock while running Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K. But for the majority of AAA games out there, any RTX 3080 is serious overkill, especially at 1080p and 1440p. So this brings me to the title of this video. Is a RTX 3090 worth it over an RTX 3080? Well, it depends. Since the RTX 3090 has a 24 gigabyte frame buffer at insane GDR6X speeds, it might be worth it to some content creators, streamers, and other professionals that could use the extra VRAM. 
But for the normal gamer, no. The RTX 3080 poses a much better value for not that much less performance. Now I say that with a grain of salt, because currently any RTX 3080 is going for more than a thousand US dollars. Keep in mind that's a $699 MSRP graphics card. The RTX 3090 is at least a little bit better in percentage value, currently fetching in at least $2,000 US dollars, which translates to about a 33% markup from MSRP. Alright guys, that about wraps up my look at the RTX 3090 Trinity from Zotac. If you want to see some water cooling action, let me know in the comments below. Also, please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.